The heating season is rapidly approaching, so what I thought I would do in this video is show how to inspect and clean the catalytic combustor in the Regency I-1500. To do this, we need to remove the baffle and then we can access the combustor. So this video will show removing the baffle, removing the combustor, and then putting it all back together. I've already cleaned out the firebox of all ash. It's a little tight to work in there, so hopefully we're gonna actually be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna start by just removing these and irons and laying them down so that they're not gonna be in my way. And then the next step is to go for this first secondary air tube here that needs to be removed. So to remove the tube, I grab it with a set of pliers here and then you wiggle and slide to the left. Once you do that, this little clip will come out. There's a matching little clip on the other side. So you get those down, then the tube itself, you just lower and kind of work it on an angle to slide it out. And if you get it right up in this upper corner, it should just clear. The owner's manual says to remove a brick here and a brick in the bottom. You don't actually have to do that. You can get it to clear right through this upper corner if you work it carefully. The catalyst assembly is up in there. To get to it, this baffle has to come out. This baffle's in three pieces. There's a little skinny piece to each edge and a large piece in the middle. Before we can do this and remove the baffle, there's actually a metal retainer up here on top in each corner. So you can see that I'm carefully sliding that out from this right side of the stove. And we have to do the same on the other side. Very carefully, whoop, we dropped the baffle there. So. Those edge baffles are really light and there's nothing holding it except for the rear two secondary air tubes. So they do have a tendency to kind of fall out when you're taking out that support. And so once we have those out, you just kind of carefully lean this down. And slide it out the door. And we've got our last small piece up in this corner. We can now see that combustor assembly up here in the top of the firebox. Way up there is the control rod, which is connecting in. That's what's allowing this to slide forwards and back. What we're concerned with is right here, this clip. So what we do is we lift this little clip up and out and that will release that retainer to be able to pull the combustor out. The next step is the hardest in the process. We actually have to get this to pull back. The base of this thing slides free. So it's hard to see what's happening. I'm struggling with this a little bit because as this thing heats up and cools down over burn cycles, things tend to warp. But basically this case here, this shell slides back off of this. So you can see that where that clip goes through is now kind of pushing in. And I just gotta keep working at it. I'm trying to get my fingers into these holes down here to be able to pull on this to pop it apart. So this is not the easiest thing to do here. Let me see if I can. There we go. So what I just did was slide it forward. I grabbed in these holes and then I pushed 
the mechanism back in there. And so now my hand is holding this assembly. So you wanna have your hand under it. It is a little bit heavy when it goes to drop down. And so from there, you'll notice the combustor is up on top of this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that forward again and this is tricky to fit out with that secondary tube in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the combustor from inside of here so that I can slip out this cover. And now the combustor is in a retainer right here. And again, I gotta slide it all the way forward and then you can slip it out. I apologize for the bad view. It's almost impossible to work in this little firebox without blocking the light. So here is our combustor. It sits in this little square retainer piece. And as we look at this one, you can see the light through there. So this is the face that was down toward the firebox. And this other face up toward the chimney. This actually looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and, and stick that right back in there. There's no blockages or anything like that. So we're now gonna be able to go and reassemble. So just to show you why it's a little bit difficult to get this out, I don't know if you can see sort of the mild warping that's happened there. This piece just takes a ton of heat being right by the flue exit and around that combustor where temperatures are gonna routinely be up a thousand plus degrees. And so that just tends to warp some of this thinner steel due to that heating and cooling cycling, even if it is a stainless. So to put this back in, we're simply gonna reverse the process. When I do slide that cover plate back in, you can see the little groove back there. That's what that needs to slide into. So first thing that I'm gonna do is get the combustor on the base back up inside of here. This is kind of frustrating to do. You gotta work with your hand up above. And you gotta get it just right. If I took that other secondary tube out, it might get a little bit easier, but you still gotta jimmy this thing in there. do need to be careful with this because you don't want to break the combustor. It's a ceramic that's in there. So there it is. You may have to work the combustor free from the whole thing in order to slip it up in there. Then you got this piece that has to go in. So I'm actually sliding that back. And then I'm gonna just work that up in there. You have to hold this all up into place with that combustor. And then this slides in, and I don't know if you can see this, but you've got to get it into that groove in the back, which is a trick. And then the other thing you have to do, all right, is get that front part in. So I am in the groove on the back, and then right here is that front tab. There we go, I'm now all the way through such that I can get this little clip in place. So that clip goes in, and now that combustor's back in there. So you can see the struggle that that is, not something that you wanna be doing 
all the time. All right, let's get that baffle back in there. So to put the baffle in, I'm actually gonna start with the large center piece here. Just gonna carefully slide that in on, right on top of those secondary air tubes there. I'm then gonna take one of the small side baffles and slip that in and I'm gonna slide the center baffle over so that it is flush or tight against that. I'm then gonna take the other side baffle and slip that in on top. And once I have the baffles in like that, I can then work those top metal retainers into place. So here's the metal retainer. You can see that it's an L channel and this little angled side is actually what's gonna go up against the edge of the firebox. This one goes over here on the left. And when I put this in, I'm gonna slide it up. You may need to support the baffle because it wants to tip down given that those secondary air tubes are not quite toward the center or just toward the center. So then as you get that up there, you slide it all the way toward the outside and you do the same thing on the other side. Now that both of those are in there, we can go for that secondary air tube. We're gonna just reverse the process. You'll notice here that there is a notch in this right hand end of the tube, whereas the opposite end does not have any notch. That's the left side. So the left side's gotta go in first. Again, I'm gonna sneak this right in here, right through the top. Takes a little bit of wiggling to get past the corner of that door. Then once I'm into the firebox, I can just take this, Go for that hole up here on the side. You gotta find it and line up. Okay, so now it's caught. And now what I'm gonna do is just take my pliers. And give it a, a grab and a, a little wiggle to get it to kind of seat in there firmly. The final step is to put these metal clips back in. I don't know how critical this is, but the way that I do it is hold it down like this and then just kind of rotate it carefully up and over that secondary air tube. And we do the same thing on the other side. Slip the corner in and rotate up and over the secondary air tube and we can kind of push things around make sure that they're all seated in place. So there you have it. That's how to remove the baffle and remove the catalytic combustor to inspect it on the Regency I-1500 Cascade series wood burning insert. This is not the easiest maintenance item to do and some of those parts could definitely be a little bit more robust given the thermal effects in the environment in which they're exposed on a regular basis. If you're considering a wood insert or a wood burning stove and you're looking at hybrids, where that catalytic combustor is located and how to access it for service is an important thing to consider. Obviously, what you just saw me do is something you need to do at least annually, although if you're burning 24-7, like I am with my ideal steel wood stove, it's something I actually check on a monthly basis. And so you want something that's easier to maintain if you are going to be a real regular wood burner. Inserts are tricky because you just can't access through the top of the stove like you can on a lot of wood stove models. You have to go in through the firebox. So that's not really a fault of Regency as much as it's a function of the fact that this is a fireplace insert rather than a freestanding stove. For comparison, I thought I would also show accessing the catalytic combustor on the Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel Wood Stove. 
it is a much easier process. You just lift the top lid of the stove, take out the radiator, and then the combustor is right there. Putting it back together is also really simple. You just put the radiator back in, close the top lid of the stove, and replace the center burner. And that's all there is to it.